Hello everyone, I'm Alex Hamer and this video series will cover using editor utility widgets with Houdini for Unreal Engine. As a quick introduction, as you may know, I previously worked on Pegasus doing the cloud system as I just graduated from my master's degree, uh, but now I'm a technical artist intern at SideFX. This video will talk about editor utility widgets versus scriptable tools and how to set up a basic control of a Houdini session using editor utility widgets with the Houdini public API. So there are two main types of editor tools available to us. Firstly is the scriptable tools, which George Hume has released videos on. So go check them out if that's what you're interested in. And then there's editor utility widgets slash blueprints. Functionally, editor utility blueprints slash widgets are not that dissimilar to scriptable tools, but the way you interact with them and use them differs in many ways. If I were to compare these two to something that was already an engine for someone who wasn't familiar with these new tools, I would say that scriptable tools are akin to using something like the landscaping mode, while editor utility widgets are similar to a tool set made using construction scripts, where you would use a details panel to set up parameters for a more procedural tool. Except with utility widgets, we are able to create a custom UI entirely tailored to this tool instead of being limited to what we can see in the details panel. This is a major advantage for technical artists intending to create tools for artists, as the details panel is a lot smaller, uh, smaller of a menu, and it just lists each control, which can be really messy. And additionally, if you have a lot of controls, it can be overwhelming to see many different parameters. With utility widgets, we can create custom tabs and help direct the flow of the artist through using the tool by designing an interface specifically for them. It's also important to note that scriptable tools currently have no way to build a custom UI. You can build what is called property sets, which is essentially a form of a struct, which shows up as a collapsible category. And while this may be useful, it's not the entirety of the control and customizability that we want. So now that we've covered how each of the two can be interacted with by the artist, let's dive deeper into the capabilities of each. The main difference is that a scriptable tool is mostly for use directly in the viewport and therefore comes with many native events and functions to assist with this, such as creating transformable gizmos and on click, on drag, on hover events for the viewport. This is important to note because currently a utility widget does not have this feature. So you may have to find a workaround such as getting an editor viewport position and doing a line trace for the current view, for example. During a scriptable tool being active, the editor is essentially locked into using this tool. You could enter and shut down and exit, but whilst the tool is in use, you cannot open other tools or do other tasks in the editor. You can't actually drag stuff around in the editor either, unless you click on an object and edit the actual transform. This doesn't by any means mean that scriptable tools aren't as useful as utility widgets, but in essence, they are more for simple but specialized tools and both are extremely powerful. Ultimately, it's up to you how you decide to make your tool and how it should be used and how much control over the rest of the editor you'll need whilst the tool is being used, as well as the fact of whether you want to create a custom UI for your artist. Oh, also, scriptable tools are capable technically of being used at runtime, which is interesting, but this isn't an easy process to set up and you'll have to set up your own overhead to make this a smooth experience. Uh, editor utility widgets are not usable at runtime and exclusively editor only. So I mentioned a couple times earlier that editor utilities have two forms, uh, blueprints and widgets. This video will cover widgets, but I feel like it's important to distinguish the two. So utility blueprints is a special class that's mainly intended to run scripts in the editor, which don't need any UI, whilst utility widgets can run scripts with UI. So let's jump in and set up a new utility widget. I'm going to assume in this tutorial that you have a basic understanding of firstly HDAs as well as Unreal and its types of objects and the way blueprints run. If you're not familiar with these, there's hundreds or probably thousands of tutorials out there for creating HDAs in Houdini and of course the Unreal basics. So in our content browser, we can look at the creation menu and enter the editor utilities tab and then click on editor utility widget which will bring us into a new menu. This is where we can decide the base widget for our utility. I personally don't usually go for the suggested ones at the top. 
and instead use Editor Utility Scroll Box, which allows the user to have a nice scroll feature within the whole menu if it gets too long or that the user can navigate easier. You'll notice that nearly every menu in Unreal has this feature, so that's what I like to use. That being said though, you are able to do others that are native to the Unreal UI system, but notice that they do recommend you choosing the more panel type widgets as opposed to something like a button. So I'd recommend using the ones they suggest or maybe something that's more of a panel type, such as a canvas panel, vertical box, horizontal box, scroll box, etc. So once we select this, it'll open up and if you've ever done widgets or UI in Unreal before, you'll notice it's the exact same. So what we are making is essentially a widget that you would use for a game normally, except instead of coding runtime functionality, we're using exclusively editor only functions. So what we're going to be using mainly is the Houdini Engine public API, and it's very capable for creating and manipulating HDAs in Unreal Engine. Let's quickly demonstrate an example of using the API reference to call a Houdini function. Here I've just set up three buttons to start, restart, and stop our Houdini session. Now, as you may know, HDAs cannot be created or cooked without a Houdini session active, and the same goes for any API functions specific to HDAs. So if we go into our event graph where our button is being called, we can firstly check whether there's a valid session already. And if not, we can then call the create session function. This will handle setting up the Houdini session for us and essentially does the same thing as a user going to the Houdini engine tab at the top and clicking create session here. This is going to be a familiar theme you'll notice when using the public API, which is that calling Houdini functions with the API will be the exact same and often name the same as using some of the buttons on the built-in Houdini UI. We can also go ahead and check if the session does already exist for restart and stop, and then we can call restart and stop on these respectively. This just creates an extra buffer so that the engine isn't having to do any work in, for example, if there's no session already and you try and restart it. I can also then add a little status bar so a user knows what the current status of the Houdini session is. We're trying to build a system which makes it as user-friendly to the artist as possible. So let's test it. If I click Run Utility Widget, it should open up in a new menu. But you can also drag it into one of the usual slots. And if we stop and start it, it will go back to this place that we set it. Now you can see if we click our Start Houdini button, the Houdini session starts running and it also updates automatically on the status bar. And of course, the other buttons for restart and stop work as well. So now we have our widget set up and we can control the Houdini session with it. In the next video, we'll set up the Houdini asset in the scene and learn how to manipulate it. Thanks for watching.